In this video, we will go over section 3.6, modeling with exponential, mostly exponential functions. Um, after watching this lesson video and taking notes, I want you to go to Canvas and try this 3.6 daily problem Canvas quiz. Now, I created this using the new quiz function in um, Canvas, so um, we never really use this function. We, we've been always using the classic fun or quiz function. So I want you to try it for the first time. Let me know how it goes. I did um, allow for like a scientific calculator um, for you to be able to use it on this. Um, but all these you will be required to, well, you're going to have to write an equation and then solve for an answer. So it will be nice to have, you, it will be very good to have like a piece of paper and pencil pen um, to do some work on the side instead of just trying to do everything on the computer screen. So I got five problems for you. Um, very similar to what we are about to go over. Maybe after the video, I will... After the notes, uh, I will come back and do number three with you all because I don't think I have log application question on the notes, but this is one that I put on here. So we'll may, we may come back and do this one together, number three. And number four and five, and the rest of them are all exponential functions that are very similar to um, what you're going to do with me. Now, as you can see, I didn't select any answers, but... I'm submitting it um, just to kind of test it with you. Um, earn point zero because I didn't answer anything. And I did hide the correct answers. Um, you have three attempts. So you can take it three times and your highest score will be recorded. Um, but this is the assignment that goes with this very lesson, okay? Now let me go back to the notes. And um, I will come back and try to go over number three with you all together. Okay, um, section 3.6 is now... Remember, in 3.5, we solved uh, log and exponential equations. So now what we're going to do in 3.6 is we're going to actually um, set up an equation and solve for a variable. Um, so let's do a quick review of exponential function um, application. We've done this in, I believe, what, 3.3 or 3.4. We've done some of these exponential growth and decay application problems before. Suppose that the dollar value V of T of a certain house that is T years old is given by the following exponential function. Now, it's a house price, um, but we don't know, though. Is it, is it an exponential growth or is it an exponential decay? Is the house price going up or is it going down? So let's take a look. V of T, they gave us the equation, is 687,530 times 0.95 raised to the teeth power. Now, what is the initial value of this house? Remember, um, if, oh, whoopsie, that's a little too big. If you have P of T, um, exponential growth or decay, uh, we both uh, multiply by that initial value, and then we did 1 plus R to the teeth power, right? And if R is positive, then if R is positive, then we have growth function. And if R is negative, then we have decay, right? So if you add a number to 1, a positive number to 1, it's going to be greater than 1. If you add a number that is smaller than 0, oh, sorry. If you add a positive number to 1, then it's, on, it's a growth function. So if this base is greater than 1, then we're looking at a growth. Now, if this base is less than 1, because we take away from 1, then that's going to be a decay function. Take a look at the base of this. It's 0 0.95. Is this a growth or decay? This is a decay function. It's going down uh, by, what's the rate? R of 5% or 0 0.05. We subtract away 0 0.05 from 1. That's how I got uh, 0 0.95 in that parenthesis. So, well, initial value here is $687,530. Does the function represent growth or decay? And the answer is decay because, um, um, well, we can say 1 minus 0 0.05 is equal to 0 0.95 and our R which is 0 0.05. Um, well, I should say R is negative 
0.05 and this is definitely less than zero um so if the base is less than one this is decay if base is greater than one then that's going to be growth function okay all right what percent does the value of the house change each year it's going down by it is going down by what percent 5% each year. And how did I got 5%? Well, we know because 1 plus R is equal to um, 0 0.95. So if you subtract 1 from both sides, you get that R is equal to um, negative 0 0.05. So that negative is telling us that it's going down by, it's changing by um, um, 0 0.05 and that in percentage is going to be 5%. So this is a review of what we did before. Uh, but now let's solve something different because you know how to read these equations. Um, first couple of examples that I got for you, they already come with equation that we're just going to solve. Uh, but later on, we are going to write our own equations like number three, four, um, five and six and seven oh well that one has an equation we're going to be writing equation exponential equations ourselves uh, to solve these application problems but let's take a look at the first one number one nicole places a bottle of water inside a cooler um, as the water cools the temperature c of t in degrees celsius is given by the following function uh, where t is a number of minutes since the bottle was placed in the cooler uh, Nicole wants to drink the water when it reaches the temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. So she's waiting until C of T turns into how many degrees? 21 degrees Celsius. How many minutes? What they want you to find is find T. How many minutes should she leave it in the cooler? Round your answer to the nearest tenth. So 21 is not T. Okay, T is what we want to find. So this is how we're going to set up this equation. Um, we're going to say 21 equals 7 plus 17e raised to the negative 0.034t. And I'm going to do this on your exam because I know at least you're setting up the equation yourself. If I just give you something like this, it's really bad, but some people are just going straight to an online calculator and just even copying down the work to, and then, you know, I want you to be able to set up something and show me step by step. And, um, cause you are capable of solving this yourself. You don't really need an online calculator to do all the work for you. Right. All right. Let's go ahead and solve this equation together. Subtract seven from both sides. If you do that, you will get 14 equals seven times E to the negative 0 0.034 t now what we're going to divide both side by seven now the thing is um we want to make sure that exponential term is isolated so we're doing like the first first subtracting that seven got rid of that positive seven that was adding to it and then now we're dividing by seven and before because we're not ready to take ln just yet so we say two equals e raised to the negative 0 0.034 t now notice this exponential term, e to the negative 0 0.034t is isolated. This is where we're going to take natural log of both sides. Now natural log of 2 on the left side, but if you take natural log of this e expression, remember this exponent will come right down. This will come right down using the uh, what property? The power property, right? Let me go ahead and bring this work over here. So what we're going to have is natural log of 2 on the left side. And what happened to ln natural log of e? Well, we do know that natural log of e will just simply turn into 1, right? So that's really, that's gone now. Uh, and the only thing that we have left is negative 0.034t. So in order for you to solve for t, what are we going to do to both sides? We're going to divide both sides by negative 0 0.034. So let's divide both sides by negative 0 0.034. So we are about to find, and we're going to round to the nearest tenth. We're about to find how many minutes Nicole needs to wait for her uh, drink to be 21 degrees Celsius cold. So I'm typing this in my scientific calculator. 
um, natural log of 2 divided by negative 0.034, and that comes out to be, uh-oh, a negative 20.3, um, and they wanted you to do the nearest tenth, right? I'm going to go ahead and do 0.4 minutes. Now, we got a problem, though. I mean, should it come out to be, um, should it come out to be what? Negative? It really shouldn't have. So, you know what? Well, I don't know what happened here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this together and see if there is any typo or there is any mistake that I made here. Okay? All right. First, we set up c of t equals 21. And then we subtract it by... Oh, gosh. Guys. I noticed it. You see? It wasn't 7 that I needed to divide by. And probably some of you noticed it, but you couldn't tell me because I'm, I'm recording this... <laughs> on Tuesday, um, it wasn't 7, it was 17, so I need to go back and fix all my mistakes real quick, okay, so I'll do that right now, I was dividing by 7, and that's, that's not right, and you see how, when I ended up with, oh, Nicole needs to wait negative 20 minutes, I knew something was wrong, so I'm dividing everything, I'm changing everything to 17, as I thought, I was looking at 7, but it wasn't 7, it was actually 17, so it's not anymore 2, Oh, that was so silly. It's 14 divided by 17, and that's not really like a nice looking decimal, so I'm just gonna leave it as 14 divided by 17. Oh, so glad I caught what went wrong with it. Um, natural log of 14 over 17, and that's getting divided by that same decimal. So, oh, uh, it's good, you know, sometimes you make these silly mistakes, but as long as you go back and think about your answer, like, we knew that we better not get a negative number um, when we solve for t, right? Now I got it. Type that in your calculator for me. Natural log of 14 over 17 divided by negative 0 0.034. When you do that, you will get 5.7 minutes. Ah, more likely. Okay, that is great. Now, because I'm about to... Because I made a silly, you know, mistake earlier. This is, I'm, I'm going to go a little extra and actually check my answer, okay? Um, I'm going to check what is C of 5.7. Now, we noticed, uh, we, we kind of rounded it. So, I'm not expecting to get exactly 21. But I want to see something close to it, right? If I plug in 5.7 into the original equation, 0 0.034 times 5.7. And that right there, I'm going to just type in in my scientific calculator. I better get 21 out, right? 7 plus 17 times e raised to the negative 0 0.034 times 5.7. When I type that in, I got approximately 21.004985. And that's close enough. That's close enough. And you know why it didn't come out to be exactly 21, right? Because it wasn't exactly 5.7. It was just rounded to 5.7. So yay, that's what it is. That's how you um, solve the, the application problems in this section by using what we learned in section 3.5. We're solving it backward by using our equation solving skill. So let's try a couple more together. Uh, but it was a good um, you know, point for us to kind of check and see if the, the answer that we get even makes sense, right? All right, suppose, number two, suppose that the velocity v of t in meters per second of a skydiver falling near the Earth's surface is given by the following exponential function. So this is the function they gave us. Uh, where t is the time after diving measured in seconds. How many seconds? How many seconds? So what are they asking for? They're asking you to find t. T. After diving, will the skydiver's velocity be 57 meters per second? So what they are giving you is that uh, V of T is equal to 57. They are not saying T equals 57 um, seconds. So what are we going to do? We're going to set 57 on the other side of the equal sign. 82 minus 82 times E to the negative 0 0.18 t. This is very similar to number one that we just solved. Well, let's try it again. All right, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 82 from both sides. Minus 82 
minus 82. If I do that, I will get um, 57 minus 82 is negative 25. And that equals bring down negative 82 times e to the negative 0.18t. Alrighty, um, what are we going to do to both sides now? Divide both sides by negative 82. Uh, divide both sides by negative 82. Now, I got to be careful. I'm going to type in negative 25 divided by negative 82 to see if it's a nice decimal. And for me, that is a that is not really a nice looking decimal. So I'm just going to keep it as a fraction. I'm going to keep it as 25 over 82 because I don't want to round my answer until uh, my, uh, my decimal is in the middle of a problem. I'm going to wait until the very last answer. All right, so that's what we got. So... Mm, subtracted 82, divided by 82, negative 82. Now what are we going to do to both sides? We're going to take natural log of both sides. So take natural log of 25 over 82 on the left side. And then we're going to take natural log of this E expression. By now, you know that um, if you take natural log of an exponential fo uh, form that has E as the base, those two will just cancel. And, um, well, those two will just actually turn into one. And then going to leave you with 0.18t, right? All right. So I'm almost done. We're about to find the final answer. t equals natural log of 25 over 82 divided by what decimal? Negative 0.18. Now, how many seconds after diving will the skydiver's velocity be 57 meters per second? We're about to find out. Natural log of 25 over 82. I found my scientific calculator, so I started using it, zero, negative 0 0.18. And that comes out to be, if I round this out, I mean, it came out to be 6.59913 dot, dot, dot. But if they want you to round it to the nearest tenth, that will be 6.6. .6 seconds so kind of similar to number one nothing really new just kind of a great review of solving for um a, 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 a t that's in um you know that was in an exponential form um all right let's keep going um now this is new um remember we talked about regular exponential growth um Let's take a let's let's write it down exponential. Well, I'll just call it equation because if r is negative, it was a decay. Um, that was p naught times um, one plus rate raised to the teeth power. Now in calculus, um, if you're going into either two sixty one or I'm not sure about two sixty three, but you will learn. Um, to come up with this continuous um, compounding formula, A equals P times E to the RT power. Uh, we'll do that. that. That is very fun. But in pre-calculus class, what we're going to do is we're going to just use it. Now, when do we know we need to use this? Uh, when they say something like, um, where is it? I'm trying to highlight it. Ah, here it is continuous exponential growth or continuous exponential decay okay um other words they may use is con compounding continuously because um i guess in finance we may compound it monthly or quarterly or daily, but a lot of things in nature are not really waiting at the end of the day or at the, and then waiting until the end of the month to compound. So um, compounding continuously is a very common choice um, when we look at these natural phenomenons. Um, so um, when do we use this E formula? Um, when the problem um, is talking about continuous exponential growth or continuous exponential decay, or if you see the word compounding continuously, then this is what you're going to use. And you do know what E is, um, and P just stands for just the initial value, and that's just the 
initial value. And A is just like our P of T, and that's the ending amount or ending value amount. Okay? And R is the right, but if R is positive, if R is positive, then we're looking at a continuous growth model. And if R is negative, then we call that a continuous decay model, okay? And T is just going to be time. Um, and E, you know, that's just, that's just a natural logarithm phase. All right, let's go ahead and um, use this formula to answer some of these continuous exponential growth examples. And I will highlight the keyword that's telling us to use this formula. The number of bacteria in a certain population increases according to a continuous exponential growth model. So when you see that word, that's when you write down A equals P times E raised to the RT power. Now, of course, bacteria is not going to wait every hour or every, um, every end of the day or every, you know, end of the month to multiply, to increase their population. They're doing that continuously. So it makes sense to use the continuous exponential growth model here. Um, look, they're giving us a couple information here. They're telling us that the growth rate uh, parameter of 2% per hour, the rate is 2% per hour. Um, how many hours does it take for the size of a sample to double? Oh, no, this is a good question. You'll see this very often. Like, not even in a bacteria. This is, we don't really want the bacteria to grow. Maybe unless it's a good bacteria. But you know when we really use this, how long will it take for something to double in an amount? Like when we're talking about investment, right? Like I want to um, invest my $5,000 in, 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 in an investment account, but I want to know how long will it take for money to double, you know? So those are the cases. I mean, this is a very common case. So um, this is what you can do. Now, they never really gave us the initial value, you see? They didn't say that we have two bacteria or four bacteria. So what you can do is this. We can say, we can keep the PSP, we just, we're going to say that there are P number of bacteria right now. But if you double, what is double P? That's just going to be 2P, right? So we can say A is 2P and P is just 1P. That's doubling. Now, if it was triple, if it was triple, then I would have put P and 3P, right? If this was the word quadruple, then I will put 1P and 4P. But because it's, this is sample to double, I'm going to use set A equals 2P. Okay? All right, we're going to keep everything the same. I'm going to multiply that by E to the... Now you do know what the rate is, right? They said rate is 2% per hour. So I'm going to convert that 2% into a decimal of 0 0.02. And T is the unknown variable that we're going to solve for. Now you may be freaking out because... We're looking at an equation, a single equation with two unknown variables. Now, let me highlight these unknown variables for you. We don't know what P is. We don't know what P is. We don't know what T is. But here's the thing, though. Let's try to solve for T because that's what we want. They want you to find how many hours does it take. How many hours does it take? They're asking you to find T. What are we going to do to both sides? Let's go ahead and divide both sides by P first. Divide both sides by P. Guess what happens now? P cancels out. We get 2 equals E raised to the 0 0.02 T. And I didn't really say it, but do you understand why that 0 0.02 must be positive? The growth rate, right? The bacteria are increasing in their population. So I put 0 0.02 as a positive number. Now, if you're looking at an exponential decay, we must put a negative sign in front of that uh, the rate, uh, but this is okay so far. Now, what do you do to both sides? We're going to take natural log of both sides, right? So take natural log of 2 and natural log of e to the 0 0.02t. If you do that, we'll get natural log of 2 equals, now you know what happened to that ln and that e, um, that turns into 1, but before it turns into 1, it can drop down that power, uh, 0.02t, so that is not an exponent anymore. All right, let's solve for t. t is going to be, now you know what to do to both sides. We're going to divide both sides by 0 0.02. t is exactly natural log of 2 divided by 0 0.02.
Now, type this in your calculator. Let's figure out how many hours it will take this bacteria population to double. LN2 divided by 0 0.02 comes out to be 34 point, and they wanted you to round this to the nearest hundredth. So round this to 34.66. And what was the time unit? Years, month, days? No, these are in hours. So in 34.66 hours, the population of this certain bacteria will double. Now in, um, in I think 261, you also, I mean, we call this the doubling time formula. I can give that to you right now. Doubling time formula is simply going to be natural log of 2 divided by the rate. Okay, so if you want to use that, that's okay. Um, and that's what happened here, right? We ended up solving for um, t, and that was natural log of 2 divided by the rate of 0 0.2. So if you want to rem remember that formula, um, feel free to use that on your homework problems if you want. But we know where that came from, right? All right. Now let's look at our money growing continuously. Suppose that 1400 is initially invested in an account at a fixed interest rate. Now, I'm going to highlight this important word here, compounded what? Continuously. There are other compounding formulas, like compounding monthly, daily, quarterly, weekly. But I'm going to go ahead and ask you for the com compounding continuously formula here. Suppose also that after five years, after five years, so there the T is going to be five. The amount of money in the account is 1774. Um, I'm highlighting some of these keywords here. Um, the compounding continuously part gave me A is equal to P times E raised to the RT power. All right. They want you to find the interest rate per year. Round your answer as a percentage. Round your percentage to the nearest hundred. Look, well, hundredth. All right. Let's identify what we know. Uh, we were given that P, um, the initial investment is 1400 right? And now what else do we know? We know it took five years for that 1400 to grow and become 1774. So these are the three variables that we know about. And you know what? That's really all we need. If you take a look, let's plug in everything we know. A is 1774, P is 1400, and we're multiplying that by E to the R times what power? Fifth power. What's the only variable that we don't know in this equation? R, right? So we're doing good. So let me just, because the, the, the power is bothering me, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as e to the 5r power. And solving for r or solving for t is pretty common in these modeling problems. So I want you to know how to do these. What are you going to do to both sides first? Let's go ahead and divide both sides by 1400. And I really don't want to divide and turn it into a decimal in the middle of a problem. But who knows? Let me see if it's a nice decimal. 1774 divided by 1400. Uh, it's not really the nicest looking decimal. Um, it's, so, you know, at least my scientific calculator simplified it for me. Um, 887 divided by 700. You don't really need to simplify the decimal there. But uh, I'm sorry, this, uh, simplify the fraction there. But it's just up to you. Alrighty, now what do we do to both sides? Once that exponential term is isolated, this is your time to take a natural log of both sides. If you take natural log of both sides, uh, we can say, uh, what happened? This ln and phi, ln and e, natural log of e just gives you 1, and the 5 r comes down in front of it, so we will get um, natural log of 887 divided by 700 equals 5 times r, right? So if you want r by itself, it makes sense to divide both sides by 5. So what is r? r is, the rate is, natural log of 887 divided by 700. And we're going to divide that natural log by 5. All right. Now here's the thing, though. They wanted you to convert your answer or write your answer as a percentage. So I'm going to get a decimal, but I will multiply that by 100 to write that as a percentage, okay? So you do that too. So type in natural log of 887 divided by 700 on the numerator and divide that quantity by 5. You will get 0 0.04735. 
and we're going to convert that into a percentage. So if you multiply that by um, 100, you will get 4.74%. And just checking, is my answer rounded to the nearest hundredth? Yes, it is. So that's what it is. That's how you do it. A lot of taking natural log of both side problems today, right? All right. Um, here's an uh, not an example. Here is just continuation of what we were talking about. Um, nice, nice chart. I think I got this from Alex, actually, your textbook. Um, or Alex. Um, it explains everything. What's A? It's the amount at time T or the final amount. We know P is the initial amount. E is just, just you know, Euler's number, right? E, e is just a constant. Um, R is the rate and T is the time in years. So I think it's kind of getting repetitive. But it's all right. Um, if you feel like, oh, I got this. I think this is not that bad. I want to try them myself. Then you feel, you know, feel free to stop the video, try them. But, you know, I got all these nice looking examples typed up. I'm going to keep going, okay? But if you feel like, oh, I got this. I want to try some on your own. Well, then go try 3.6 Alex problems um, and definitely try that Canvas quiz. But if you feel like, oh, I need more examples, come back. I'll be right here going over this. All righty. So, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Sun hope to send their son to college in 14 years. Yeah. How much money should they invest now at an interest rate of 8.5% per year? Compounded. Oh, hello. Highlight this word. Compounded continuously. As soon as you hear that part, you know, oh, I need that equation. A equals P times E raised to the RT power. And I think they just gave us the right, didn't they? Hello, there is the rate. So we know that rate is 8.5% in decimal is going to be 0 0.085. So make sure to use that for your R. Um, in order to be able to contribute five, oh, I'm sorry, not 5,000, oh, $50,000 to his education. So that $50,000, guys, is not... Uh, the initial amount that me and my husband have in our pocket right now, that's the amount that we want to have in 14 years. Um, so write down A, the ending balance. We want that to be $50,000. $50, we want to have that in, well, kind of said it, right? In 14 years. So what's T? T is 14. So what are we finding? In order to be able to contribute $50,000 to his education. Here's the question. Here's the question they're asking. How much money should they invest now? Now, it's almost like a certificate of deposit, sounds like. I mean, uh, it's just putting a lump sum of money in an account, waiting for it to grow. Uh, but, I mean, that's really not like... That's not what I'm doing. I'm, I'm putting a little bit of money every month instead of putting a big lump sum of money. But suppose that in a happy scenario that I have so much money that I can just put it in an account and wait for 14 years for it to grow. So that's the scenario. And um, I know everything to plug in. So let's go ahead and find out how much money I better have today in order for it to grow it to $50,000 in 14 years. If I can find someone who can offer me 8.5% per uh, year for the interest rate. All right. A is $50,000. That's our goal. P is unknown. I don't know how much money I need today, but I know the rest of them. E is going to get raised to 0 0.085 times T is what? 14. Now, if you take a look, what are we solving for here? We're solving for P. Mm, right? So if you want P by itself, this is a fun one. If I want P by itself, I want this thing gone. I want this E to the 0 0.085 times 14. I'm going to divide both sides by that term. Why am I doing that? Because I want P by itself. In fact, we got the answer. I need approximately $50,000 divided by E raised to the 0 0.085 times 14th power. And, but I shouldn't tell that to my husband, right? I mean, like, how much is that, Sue? 
Well, we're going to go ahead and plug this in so that we can get a money value. Now, what you're expecting is you're expecting to get a value that is, of course, smaller than $50,000 because we want our money to be growing into $50,000. So let me go ahead and do that. $50,000 divided by E raised to the um, 0 0.085 times 14. Um, if you have issue typing these into your calculator, please email me. We can talk about those. But I think, you, oh, guys, I got an answer, and this isn't looking too bad at all. You know what I need? I need $15,211.06 today. And then if I just put in a nice um, account that's going to pay me 8.5% per year, then ooh, it's going to grow into $50,000 in 14 years. I wonder what a BBNT is charging me, uh, not charging me, giving me, because I got a tiny savings account. I don't think it's nowhere near 8.5%, um, but I probably shouldn't go into, uh, I, was, I was trying to go into online banking to look into that, but let me go ahead and finish the rest of these. All right, number six. How much should be invested now? Oh, guys, I think these go together. They go together. Is it? No, it's not really. It's not going together. I thought the investment problems are going together, but let me read it. And um, I don't think it's necessarily Mr. and Mrs. Sun's uh, problem here. How much should be invested now at an interest rate of 6.75% per year? So what I'm given is that R equals 6.75%. In decimal, that is 0 0.0675. And this is compounded continuously. Whenever you see that keyword, you write down A equals P times E to the RT power. Um, to have, what do they want in four years? $4,500. $4,500 in four years. So, you know, part of the thing is you got to read it and uh, pick out these keywords because I know... These online calculators, they may solve an equation for you, but you got to know how to set up these equations, and that's what you're going to do. Uh, round your answer to the nearest cent. We're going to find... We're going to find P. Okay? So A is 4,500. P is unknown, but we do know that E is getting raised to... 0 0.0675 times the year that we're waiting is 4. Now, this is very similar to what we just did. We're going to divide both sides by e to the 0 0.0675 times 4. e to the 0 0.0675 times 4. Therefore, p equals 4,500 divided by e to the 0 0.0675 times 4. I think I could skip a couple of these examples because they're very similar, but why not? 4,500 divided by e to the 0 0.0675 times 4. What did you get? I got $3,435.21. All righty, so that's how you would solve for the present value. So that's how you do the present value problems. Um, and we're left with the very last page. Okay. Um, how about half-life or doubling time? I think we looked at doubling time already. Uh, doubling time kind of gave you a formula earlier, right? It's going to be natural log of 2 divided by the rate, right? Half-life. It's going to be very similar. It's going to be natural log of half divided by rate. But let's actually solve for it. Let's actually solve for it. And what I got, a nice um, summary of you know, what we're doing going over. You notice it's just the same thing as A equals P times E to the RT. It's the same exact equation. Uh, instead of A, they're using Y. Instead of P, they're using Y naught. Um, but they're still talking about the final amount and the initial amount. Um, E is still getting used, and these are for continuously compounding or continuous exponential growth or decay. Okay, so let's look at the last two examples, and that will be it. All right, the radioactive substance decays according to the following function, where y naught is the initial amount present, and y is the amount present at time t. Okay, 
Now, notice they said decay, right? Substance decays. Now, if I'm looking at this equation, what part tells me that this is exponential decay? Now, this is negative, right? R is negative. So that's why we know this is a decay function. All right, what else do we know? Um, um, or what else do they want you to find? Find the half-life of this substance. Ah, what does it mean, half-life? Some of you are taking chemistry, I know. Uh, and you, you've heard of this half-life before. Um, if the last couple of problems about bacteria and investment, we were interested in uh, knowing the doubling time. Half-life is talking about how long will it take for a substance to become um, exactly half of what it used to be. So this is what we're going to do. Um, what you can do is you can say y not is just 1. Okay, You can say y not is 1. But you want the final amount to be half of, right? You want the final amount to be half of what it used to be. So you can say y, the final amount is half. Now, if you want to use 500 or and 250, that's okay too, right? Because as long as they have that relation, like if shift, like y has to be half of what you, you what you started from. But one and half is, you know, it makes sense, right? Um, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and plug in everything I know. Um, for y, I'm going to say half. And for y not, I'm going to keep 1. And I'm going to multiply that by e raised to the negative 0 0.0936 and t. And t is that half-life. How long will it take my original amount to become half of what it used to be? So let's solve this. Um, we're dividing by 1 on both sides, right? So... That's just gone. So half equals e raised to the negative 0 0.09360. Now, notice that e term is isolated. So what are you doing to both sides? You're taking natural log of both sides, right? You're taking natural log of both sides. So what do we have now? We have natural log of half equals, and you do know that natural log and e cancels out or gives you 1. So we're left with negative 0.0936t. To solve for t, you divide both sides by that decimal. So t is going to be natural log of half divided by negative 0.0936. And I'm going to go ahead and type that in my calculator to figure out the half-life for this substance. So type in natural log of half in the numerator. And then in the denominator, type in that right, negative 0 0.0936. And what you got, what I got is 7 point, rounded to the nearest tenth, uh, 7.4. Um, now, let's think of, let's be careful about the unit. What is this? Is it years? Oh, no. In days. So in 7.4 days, uh, this substance will become half of what it used to be. Uh, and you kind of notice the formula here, right? Um, we'll go ahead and write that down here. Half-life formula in terms of rate is going to be natural log of half divided by the rate. And I said R, but remember, this R must be negative R, right? This must be negative because a half life only happens for a substance that's decaying, right? If it's doubling, we're not going to have a half life. So R is just going to be a negative uh, um, rate. Um, and that's very certain. That makes sense, right? Um, we had that doubling time formula to be natural log of 2 divided by rate. In that case, rate was absolutely positive because that rate was positive. Um, no, no, because it was an exponential growth function. It was growing. But for the half-life, the R is just going to be a negative value. Okay? All right. Let's do the very last one. A mass of a radioactive substance follows a continuous exponential decay model. All right. Highlighting, highlighting this. This is decay. Now, notice they didn't give us any equation here. Hmm. I'm going to write down A equals P times E raised to the RT power. Well, here's the thing. I know R must be negative. Why? Because this is a decay model. With the decay rate of 0 0.085, that's 8.5%, right? Per day. Um, find though, you know what? I said negative and I 
of course, put a positive there. <laughs> Let me stick in the negative right there. All right. Find the half-life of the substance. That is the time it takes for one, one half of the original amount in a given sample of this substance to decay, round your answer to the nearest hundredth. Now, here's the thing that we kind of just came up with the half-life formula, didn't we? We just kind of came up with it. Why don't we use it, okay? Half-life is equal to natural log of one-half divided by the rate. And the rate here is negative 0.085. And I don't mind if you use that formula because we came up with it together, right? So type in natural log of half divided by negative 0.085. And what I got is 8.15 um, nearest hundredth. Yep, one five and looking at the unit. Oh, it says per day. So days. So it's going to take 8.15 days for this substance to become half of what it used to be. And this is just us using that half-life formula. Let me bring that guy back over here. Um, so if you want to keep on using that half-life or doubling time formula, I'm okay. Because we, went, uh, we came up with them together, didn't we? Um, make sure that R is negative though. Because you, when you get an answer like, um, negative 8.15 day, you should stop and think about your answer. Just like how, remember, I messed up like over here on the very first example because I think I divided by 7 instead of 17. So it's good for us to think about, does my answer even make sense, right? Um, so that's it for 3.6. I will be back to talk about uh, your exam format and your exam 3 and eventually, we only have one topic left in 161 after today. Um, that is solving systems by using matrices. Um, but that's going to be after exam three. So right now, go ahead and try that Canvas quiz.